hello and welcome today in this video i thought it would be a good idea to talk about the day in the life of a virtual psychiatrist because i did a video several years back of the typical day of a psychiatrist and it was just kind of like a general day and this was pre-pandemic before a lot of things changed and telepsychiatry just blew up because we were all forced to work from home and I just wanted to kind of refresh the video and talk about some of the slight changes that occur with working from home versus working in person. There was a huge surge of telepsychiatry visits during the pandemic. I have some information that I looked up and according to this information, before the pandemic, less than 1% of psychi psychiatric visits were conducted via telehealth. So it was apparently, this was in 2019. It was very few and far between. And I remember wanting to work from home and wishing I could get one of those jobs, but it was really hard for me to find those type of jobs. Like pretty much everything was in person. Telepsychiatry was not very common. But during the peak of the pandemic in 2020, telepsychiatry visits increased dramatically. In some regions, it surged by over a thousand percent or 10 times higher compared to pre-pandemic levels. And according to a, st a study published in JAMA Psychiatry in 2021, telepsychiatry usage increased by approximately 1,500% or 15 times in the early months of the pandemic. Because I remember when I was working, I was working at an in-person clinic and during the pandemic, we, I was working actually at two different clinics. Well, no, no, I was only working at one. And when I tell you when governor, I think not governor, when Mayor Lightfoot, I think it was Mayor Lightfoot at the time, I could be completely wrong, issued that we had to work from home. Literally that Friday, I was working in the clinic by Monday, I was working from home. I didn't even get a day off. They quickly transitioned us to working from home and there was no guidance or anything. It was just, okay, now you're working from home. And so literally everybody was forced to work from home during the pandemic and it's continued. So by 2021, even when um, in-person visits resumed, the use of virtual psychiatry remained um, elevated compared to the pre-pandemic levels and some studies suggest that virtual visits still account for around 30 to 40 percent of all psychiatric visits in some region in some regions even as restrictions ease so it's still very common um, and a lot of people are still working um, through telepsychiatry companies there's companies that have come up now Maybe some of you have seen my commercials online and different apps and things like that um, where a lot of psychiatrists are working remotely or from home. So what is a typical day like for a psychiatrist working from home? So basically it's the same thing. It's not any different in my opinion. I worked for a telepsychiatry company for a couple of years and I will say I didn't feel like it was very different at all. It's not like a corporate America job where you can just move your mouse around and fake like you're working. No, you're working, you're seeing patients, you're still seeing the same number of patients, you're just seeing them through a computer screen instead of them being right there in front of you. So you still have the same type of appointments and you still have to write notes. It's, it's literally the same thing. You're just not leaving your home. And so, I guess I'll go through the, the typical day and then I'll go over like the pros and the cons of telepsychiatry I was, you know, versus in person. So like I said, it's the same thing. So if you, if you go back and watch my typical day of a psychiatrist, it's literally the same thing. So, but you don't have a commute. So I would typically wake up about an hour before my day started and I would get ready. I would put on a shirt and still have on pajama pants most of the time because why put on pants? I mean, unless you want to, but I would put on a shirt. I have tons of shirts. I have like maybe four or five pair of pants, but I have a ton of shirts and sweaters and stuff like that. And then I would make my coffee because I would typically have my cup of coffee. 
and then I would log on and see and look at my schedule see if I had any messages from the night before if I had time I would respond to the messages if it was really quick and just required like a quick answer if it required a longer answer I might answer it later in the day when I had more time then I would prep my note for the visit that I had and then I would wait for the patient to log in and um yeah usually they just pop up they're they're there well they don't pop up but usually you'll get a notification that the the, the person is waiting and then you start the visit and yeah you see the person just like you would you, you know go through the same thing it's just they're not there in, in person and then you wrap up the visit and then if you have time after the visit then you try to finish up the note send and do like the administrative tasks like sending prescriptions um, sending any referrals or requesting referrals from case management referrals for things like therapy or other um, doctors that you think the person should see that you discuss with them like a sleep medicine doctor or primary care or something like that or any lab work that you want to order any documents that you want to send the patient you you have to send that to them um, sometimes I would send people just like little worksheets that go over topics that we talked about or if they wanted you to fill out paperwork they would have to send it to you I would send them a message sometimes with the plan if it was pretty complicated just so that they had it in writing as well and yeah so you you still have to do like administrative stuff after the visit is over and so that's why some people if you have a pretty packed day if you only have a 30 minute visit some people will try to finish the visit in 20 minutes so this is why sometimes it will feel rushed when you see people because the doctor doesn't have a lot of time and they're trying to cram a lot of things in in 20 minutes so which i personally don't think is the greatest way of practicing medicine but some people are very fast and can get to things really quickly it works for them in the typical day that i've seen for most psychiatrists is that people have a completely full day so if you start at eight o'clock in the morning a typical this is like a average day most people start around like eight o'clock in the morning and then they work until if you work an eight hour day they work until maybe like 4 30 with a 30 minute lunch and so you work from like 8 to 12 take lunch from 12 to 12 30 then you work from 12 30 to 4. and during the times that you're working you're having patients back to back to back to back so from 8 to 12 you're gonna see between six to um eight patients because you're seeing 30 minute follow-ups or you might you might have an hour new patient evaluation and you have to somehow figure out how you're going to do all of those administrative tasks that i just mentioned for all of those visits and it varies how many tasks you have to do for each visit but yeah so it's it can be very very busy very chaotic there's and this is the norm this is the average um, i think that us as doctors should have way more time for that so that we're not rushing through appointments and we have more time to spend with the person to allow people to to talk and not cutting them off and because we're trying to stay on our our very tight timeline because the patients don't know they're not thinking like oh i have to hurry up and say what i want to say because i only have 20 minutes they're not thinking that the patients are coming in they don't know what's you know going on in terms of how much time they have or how they should answer questions and, and so anyway so uh it can be i think very rushed and chaotic unless unless some people are just really really fast and they they know how to do things very quickly and it doesn't feel rushed so that's possible um but i think i think it's not everybody doesn't practice the same way and so it just makes it hard if you are a person that wants to take more time or is a little bit slower it can be it can be tight for you but yeah so yeah you you see patients back to back to back some people i've seen some people don't even have a lunch like they literally work eight hours straight so they'll see 16 patients straight straight through i don't know how those people do that but 
I've seen schedules where people have 16 patients straight through or even more where they work nine hours, 10 hours. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a, that's a typical day. It's the same thing. It's just that you're at home now. That's really the only difference. It's exactly the same. People really like working from home. You know, I remember hearing another psychiatrist in a meeting saying that they'll never go back to working in person and they, they love it. Um, I don't know how true that was or if they really if they were just saying that just to come off as uh, uh, affable or likable or whatever to whoever was listening but I don't feel that way I felt like there definitely were some cons to working from home number one um, if you're single and aren't married don't have kids it can be very isolating sometimes that commute can be a good thing because you're at least getting out of your house you're seeing your your surroundings you're not in your apartment or your house all day like i would literally go it would be so easy to go three or four days without leaving my apartment and that was like rough on me. It would be like a struggle just to get out of the house. And when I would finally go out of the house, I would be like, oh my gosh, like it's so beautiful out here. Like I appreciated it so much. Just being around other people and like wild life and you just would appreciate it so much. And so yes, you don't have that commute and you get a little bit of extra time, but that commute sometimes isn't so bad because it, it at least gets you out. You get some fresh air. You get a different perspective. You're not just in your own world, isolated from everyone. I also felt like it was harder to consult with colleagues. You know, like I said, you have to send a message and then you have to wait for a response and you have to set up a call um, over just being able to just go to their office and ask like a quick question um, that I used to do in person, whether it was a therapist that I was working with and we had the same um, patient or a different psychiatrist and just getting like a second opinion on, on maybe a complex situation. Um, also sometimes it can be a little harder to give and receive documents because in person of course like you would just hand them the document hey fill this out really quick and give it back to the, pre the people at the front desk but now everything had to be when you work from home everything has to be digital and so some people are not very tech savvy It'd be, it was really hard to get people to fill out documents. Um, unless it served them, then they would fill it out. But if it was just something that you needed them to do, it would be really hard. Like people just wouldn't do it because it would, I think it was just harder to figure it out. You have to, you know, filling out documents online. Sometimes it can be hard. It's getting better. I've noticed that technology has gotten better. I've noticed um, on my computer, it, it is a little bit easier. I've kind of figured it out as I've been doing it more and more. So as the technology has improved, it has gotten easier. But at the beginning, I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to send this document? How do I fill this out and then send it back to the person? So that was a little rough. Some of the pros, I would say, again, no commute, less of a safety risk because you're not in the same room with the person. So you don't have to worry about them doing anything to you and using that one self-defense class that you get <laughs> that I got back in residency. You have more time to cook at home, like cook your own meals from home, which which actually I really liked because I feel like I was eating more, more healthy. I wasn't eating out every single day, like on my lunch and stuff. When I worked in person, I would eat out a lot because I wasn't really great at making my lunch and packing it. And so, and also when I was in working outpatient, I would want to leave because I would I would want just a break from being in the building that I was working in and I would just want to get some fresh air and go outside. So that would lend to me eating out a lot, going up overpriced, nasty Panera bread and <laughs> because that was the only place around and paying $16 for a half a sandwich and some some chili or something and <laughs> And, um, and and trying to avoid McDonald's and all that. So you don't have to do that. I, I was cooking more. Like I, I used to eat a lot of oatmeal. I got really good at making my own type of oatmeal at home or just eating leftovers from what I, I had cooked the night before. So 
that was good. And you know, it's probably, like I said, great for parents, people that have a family already that really don't need to be out and about or, or don't really want to do that and want to have more time to devote to their family. So, so I would say that's about it, you know, in terms of the typical day of a telepsychiatry provider, some of the differences between working in person versus remotely and my personal thoughts on it. But if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.